Starship with uh, the Sage interface. I really appreciate everyone taking time out of their day for our webinar here. And as again, Caroline mentioned, we'll talk about ship gear and the differences between ship gear and Starship. Mainly going to try to focus really on the advanced features of Starship. Uh, but game plan real quick, uh, PowerPoint slideshow we'll go through and then we'll jump into the live demo, process a quick shipment so you can see how actually Starship works. So with that being said, let me start the uh, slide deck here. Uh, just to start out a little bit about B Technologies, uh, we've been developing integrated shipping solutions since 1989, so 29 years now. Uh, been working with the Sage product for over 17 years, so that deep integration with the Sage product line. Uh, currently over 10,000 customers using Starship. Uh, we are a FedEx Gold certified solution as well as a strategic UPS ready provider. Uh, I mentioned this because both FedEx and UPS have subsidy programs and through these programs you can actually qualify for free funding to purchase Starship. So any questions on that please feel free to reach out to your uh, carrier rep and they should be able to give you additional information. Uh, and of course, we are a Sage Gold development partner as well as a Sage certified solution. Uh, B Technologies is located in Connecticut and all of our sales support development, everything is done in house. We don't outsource anything. Okay. So what's the difference, ship gear and Starship? Uh, so ship gear is what we consider a middleware. Uh, you're actually gonna, with ship gear, still be using your carrier provided software, so UPS World Ship, FedEx Ship Manager. Um, unfortunately, it is only available for FedEx and UPS, not gonna be able to do any parcel or USPS shipments through Shipgear. Um, it is really just uh, order header information, not gonna be generating any line item detail. Uh, it's gonna give us limited ERP write back. So with Sage, really, when I process a shipment through Shipgear, gonna just be writing back um, a comment line with, say, tracking information. A freight amount will go into the freight amount field, uh, but again, kind of a, a limited write back. Uh, there is no third-party application, so if you're looking for, say, EDI or uh, WMS, a warehouse management solution integration, uh, I'm not gonna be able to do that with Shipgear. And as, of course, the last two bullet points, no rate shopping and no batch processing. So with Starship, and most of these I'll get into, we'll, we'll go over that in the live demo, uh, we can do rate shopping. That can be right from Starship. It can be um, also right from sales order entry. So nice thing, we add a rate shop button. So at time of order, customer service reps or order takers can actually see live rating uh, for your carriers that you have modules with um, at time of order. Okay. So. Why Starship? Uh, with Starship, as I mentioned, so we have direct connections to over 20 LTL carriers. So one advantage and one need for Starship is if you're doing LTL shipment less than truckload, um, you know, Starship can handle that where Shipgear cannot. Um, so we do have over 20 different LTL carriers uh, that, again, we have that direct connection. So from Starship, from sales order entry inside of Sage, I can click a button and actually get returned and see my live negotiated rates that I have with those carriers. Okay. Um, in total, we have about 20, over two dozen uh, carrier connections, so including UPS, FedEx, and that's parcel as well as freight. Um, as I mentioned, that ERP integration is kind of limited with ship gear, uh, with Starship. Uh, we are going to be pulling the line item detail. Um, so from that, you know, it's going to help support and do your documentations for international shipments. Of course, for your freight shipments, we can actually generate um, bill lading forms, pallet labels, so on and so forth. But also that right back with Starship, it's automatically going to create the invoice inside of Sage, as well as right tracking information into Sage's actual tracking tables. Okay, so not a comment line, it's actually gonna hit those direct tables um, that are inside of Sage. Some additional features that are included with Starship, and again in the demo I'll, I'll show you these, but uh, our eNotify program, where you can actually create your own custom email templates, uh, you know, put your brand logo on there, build your brand awareness, nice feature, and again, we'll, we'll go into that. In our dashboard program, great reporting tool. Um, we can track from dashboard. Uh, nice thing with that, again, it could be installed in as many workstations. So you can have it on, on your front office workstations. Uh, maybe someone needs to track, they have a question about an order. They can just use the dashboard program. You know, they don't have to call up the warehouse, bother those um, guys while they're working. Uh, 
you just have access to that information right from their own website. As I mentioned, uh, we can do the rate shopping, but Starship can also automate that. So we have what we call ship via rules. You can have Starship automatically rate your shipment and then select a carrier and or service based off your own criteria. So, you know, maybe automatically select the least expensive carrier service for your shipment. Okay, that EDI and warehouse management solution, um, or integration, I should say, um, nice feature. So we do integrate with a couple of the EDI solutions out there. Um, you know, Starship can actually generate your SSCC numbers. Uh, we can actually generate GS128 labels if you're doing EDI processing. Um, and then, you know, WMS with uh, scanning solutions, ScanCo, ScanForce, um, full integration, nice thing with that. However, you define the shipment on the handheld scanner, that's how Starship will pull it in. So item to box detail will be there. All right, um, very easy. Again, with uh, Starship, we can do custom development. And actually, you can. Uh, very easy to uh, change mapping fields. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned, that line item detail is going to help uh, your international, your freight hazmat shipping. Um, and with Starship, of course, we can do the USPS. Uh, with our USPS module, it's, it is through Pitney Bowes, we actually do offer you some special discounted UPS rates. Um, and really, if you're doing your shipments, you know, if you're using UPS FedEx, here's a chart uh, quickly discussing about USPS, um, it really recommend taking a look at, look into it uh, because you can actually save uh, some significant money um, going USPS. As you can see, USPS, we don't have to worry about dimensional charges, any fuel or delivery or surcharges. You know, um, the big thing nowadays with dimensional weights, it, it, you know, can become quite costly. You know, if, for example, if you were, say, sending uh, from New York to California, which is considered zone eight, uh, say a teddy bear, you know, it's going to go in, say, a 12 by 10 by six box. You know, really with through USPS and Pitney Bowes, that cost is going to be nine dollars, almost ten dollars, nine dollars and ninety seven cents. With FedEx, you know, the actual weight would be two pounds. But again, now we're going to talk about dim weight, which is going to make it six pounds. Then, of course, you're going to have to throw in your fuel and residential surcharges. So now you're looking at oh, just over $18, so $18.04 to ship that same package. And then, of course, UPS, again, it could weigh two pounds, but dim weight is going to be five pounds. Again, those fuel and residential costs, it's going to make you the total shipment $17.17. So, you know, some nice savings there just by simply using USPS. All right. All right. So let me... Uh, Bring up my demo machine here. We'll, we'll ship a package right from Starship. So dead center of my screen, you should be able to see the Starship program. So with Starship and Sage, we actually have two different interfaces. We have a link interface where if any of you are familiar with shipping data entry, uh, you can come in through shipping data entry. Um, you know, we also have a direct interface, which I'm going to show. I always usually recommend it. Because, uh, of course, with Link now, our shippers are going to have to have access to Starship. You know, we're going to have to have, I'm sorry, access to Sage. We are going to have to have Sage installed on our shipping machines. Um, and then, of course, what we're going to do is go into Shipping Data Entry, click a Starship button, which is going to bring us to Starship, ship and process, and then have to go back to Sage. Uh, nice thing with the direct interface, my shippers can work directly from Starship. Okay, We don't have to even have Sage installed on the shipping workstations. And as you can see here, the upper left-hand corner is our source document, okay? So we can pull by sales order, by customer number, or by invoice. These fields, I can use the magnifying glass and actually just look up all my different uh, sales orders that I have inside of Sage. And it's gonna show me all that from here. You know, I can get into with this direct, in, in, uh, direct interface batch processing. And so I can select as many orders as I like. I can click process selected. And then what Starship's going to do is start automatically giving me all my shipping documents, processing the orders. Um, so a nice feature. A lot of clients use that like for Black Friday sales, you know, one item, one box. I'm not back ordering anything. Great feature. Um, if my pick sheets or whatever I, I'm shipping against are barcoded, I can most certainly just use a regular wedge type scanner and scan that barcode. Or as you're going to see here, I can just manually type in a sales order, invoice, or customer number. 
And what Starship's doing is just reaching inside a Sage, grabbing that sales order information. So again, it is going to pull the order header as well as the line item detail information. And we do this by simply mapping fields. Okay. Map fields can have a one-to-many relationship. So uh, here, just based off the ship via, Starship's auto gonna, automatically going to select the carrier, the service, the billing, the account information automatically for my shipper. Okay. It is multi-carrier, multi-mode. So if this was FedEx, it could go FedEx. Again, if it was an LTL shipment, it would automatically select my LTL carrier. We can also start getting into automating third-party shipments where we're automatically selecting the customer's account information, changing the billing type to third-party or collect for your shipper. Okay. Now the goal here is to automate and streamline that shipping process for your shippers. Okay. Sender, that is the company that I'm pulling this order from inside of Sage. So Starship does support multiple companies as well as locations and or warehouses. Recipient, just grabbing the information from the ship to on that order. Okay. Starship will also validate the address. Okay. We validate zip plus four. And then we're also, also going to validate the commercial residential flag. Okay. So going to help save on those address correction fees as well as the commercial residential correction fee for you. Okay. Down in the package in view, this is where we can get into the item and box detail. So as I mentioned, Shipgear, we're just pulling order header information. With Starship, as you can see, we can start bringing in your line items. Okay. Um, with this direct interface, another thing that's going on here, and you can have Starship automatically learn, or you can manually set up what we call packaging scenarios. So I can have items, um, if they're always going to be shipped in a certain box, I can have Starship automatically package that item for my shipper for me. Okay. So here I'm just it's pulling in this one item. Starship knows, hey, anytime this item. And this item description, I'm just using the item number. You know, I can actually change my system and actually use the description of the item if I wanted to. But here it's saying it knows, yep, this one item, every time we ship it, it goes into a large box. So as you can see, Starship's automatically packaged that for me. This works great if you guys are doing case packs because we can simply say, hey, 12 fit in this large box. So if the order was for 24, it would automatically do two large boxes with 12 of each in each box. Okay. The large box, this is part of our custom box or packaging database. So this database allows you guys to set up your own boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. A nice thing with using custom boxes once they're set up, as you can see, it will automatically populate the dimensions, okay? Now, Starship will also take into consideration the dim weights. So here, you know, my demo system, I don't have a scale. I'm just grabbing weights from inside a Sage. But as you can see here, this one is five pounds. But actually, for this package, the dim weight is 21 pounds. So we're going to help save on those dimensional uh, rate correction fees as well. If you do have scales, we integrate with most scales, so I could have my system hooked up, and then it would automatically pull in the weight um, from the scale. Okay. Uh, the item detail, again, mapping this information from Sage, but with Starship, we also have our own database for your inventory items. Okay. Um, nice thing, we, we do this because inside of Sage, you know, they currently don't have a spot for, like, say, the MNFC codes, freight class. I know starting in version 2017, they, they did do a field for commodity code, code which we can map to. Um, but as you can see here, Starship has its own database where you guys can, can set up all your international data. Okay, So country manufacturer, harmonized schedule B code. Right here, if I'm missing one, right from Starship, I can find the harmonized code by description or by if I knew partial code, I could look up that way. So all that information is going to be stored. You know, once I set it up once, that's all I have to do. I don't have to do it a second time. Again, just streamlining that, that shipping process. Okay. Uh, back in the packaging view, you know, if I needed to add a third box here, I could simply add a package. We have a repeat box function. So if this was a large order, I could simply say, hey, repeat this current box nine times for a total of 10 boxes. And then what's going to happen is I'll have 10 boxes. Uh, the item to box detail is not required. It's a nice feature so you can show your customers what's in each package. But if you do have a large order, you know, you don't want your shipper to sit here and, and, and actually, you know, to change item to box, I can simply drag and drop and I can also hold down the shift key 
to do multiple item selections. We can hold down the control key to actually split quantity, uh, but that's not required. So you could have everything just come in one box, a default box, manually add it, as many boxes as you need, throw each box on the scale, get the weight, and uh, just move on. So you don't have to actually put items in each box. Units on shipments, uh, if your shipper does back order an item, Starship will automatically back order the invoice. It is automatically gonna create inside of Sage. And then of course that will automatically back order the sales order as well. So we can do back ordering from right from Starship. All right. Uh, next step usually is again is that rate shopping feature. So I can as a shipper click the green shipping or green dollar icon here or click the rate shop tab. And simply what this is doing, again, Starship's making the call to all the carriers that I have modules with and is gonna return my live negotiated rate. So as you can see, I'll just organize this by carrier. All right, so I can see my FedEx and I have UPS set up here. There's my two test accounts. I'm gonna be able to see estimated delivery. I could change this, maybe do by business days, total days, and again, contract. Or if I wanted to, I could see publish list rates as well. Okay. With those ship bill rules, you know, again, we can have Starship automatically do this and select the carrier service based on my criteria, or I can, again, as a shipper, just manually make a change. Charges tab, this is just a breakdown of charges. Um, I, as a shipper, I don't have to select this tab to actually process this. I just like to show it because with Starship, you can set up freight rules. So freight rules can be min maxes, flat rates, it could be, as you can see on this rule here, a, percent, a percentage. Um, freight rules can, uh, what I like to call the triggers, can be um, all the way down to line item detail. So I had some clients that they ship oversized items. So they have freight rules that, set, uh, that are set up and simply say, hey, anytime item one, two, three, four is on an order, automatically add $20 because it's an oversized item. Here, I'm actually just using a user to find field that's set up in customer maintenance. It's a checkbox called freight discount. So because it's selected, this customer is receiving a 10% discount on the freight. All right. So we're gonna bring in our item, our order. We can do item to box detail if needed, rate shop. And when we are ready, we can click the ship and process button or the F5 key, okay? Um, so this is actually gonna do the whole ship and process, give me my shipping documents. Do you have the option if I may be staging this shipment or one item's not quite ready to be shipped out, I can start the process and then simply click the save button. And what that's gonna do is save the entry or the shipment inside Starship. And then I can come back later and then actually finish and process the order. But as soon as I click ship and process, I will get my shipping documents. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm actually just gonna preview them, uh, but we can have them set up so they automatically just will print right to your printers. And by printers, I mean a thermal printer and or a laser printer. So up to you where you want your documents to print. You know, we can print them to different printers. Um, we can even PDF copies of them as well. So here, this is also uh, what we call our smart label, I'm using this for the sake of the demo. So you can see a shipping label in Starship's packing list. But the smart label, as you can see, is gonna print both the shipping label and packing list to a piece of paper. So this would need to go to a laser printer. Uh, again, we can send the shipping label to a thermal printer. And if you wanna use Starship's packing list, you also have that option. I can send that packing list to a thermal printer as well. Just put it right on a thermal label, save some paper, use those free labels I get from my carrier. Or I can also send it to a laser printer you know, and print it to paper. So we get box one and get our second label for box two. Uh, because this is an inter international shipment, I will get our international documents. So as you can see, Starship can generate those. Um, let's expand this. And again, because we're pulling order header line item detail, all that information is gonna generate on the documents for you. Okay? Our documents can be customized. So maybe I want it pre-signed and dated. Again, one less thing my shipper has to stop and manually fill out. I'll get to streamline that process. Each of these uh, documents, you can create unlimited templates. And then in each template, we give you the option, if you want, you can do printing rules. So maybe a customer ABC needs this commercial invoice to look a certain way. You can simply create a template for customer ABC. 
and apply that rule. Hey, only print this document when the shipment is for customer A, B, C. All right. Uh, the other document I'm going to ha I have turned on here is the NAFTA form. Okay. And I know carriers like UPS, they do have options where they will electronically take care of the uh, international documents. So we do support that as well. But again, if you need, Starship can generate these documents. So order header, line item detail, automatically going to populate for you. So shipping process, I get my shipping documents. Now, as a shipper, I'm in that rinse repeat cycle. I'm just going to move on, you know, type in, scan, or look up my next sales order and go through the whole process again. Okay. Now I'm just going to switch gears and switch hats here, and I'll jump into Sage. I'm going to go into invoice data entry and bring up my invoice here. So here's this invoice. This is the invoice that Starship automatically created. So sales order 222 is the one we just shipped. Header tab, tracking button, as you're going to see. We're going to write back all the tracking information right into Sage's tracking tables, as I mentioned. From there, if I wanted to track, I can use Sage's tracking button. I can also use the item to box detail button if I was doing that inside of Starship. And then, of course, on the totals tab, I, we are going to write back freight rule plus or minus um, or freight amounts plus or minus any freight rules. And then from there, we can get into doing right back rules where if there's some scenarios where I do not want freight, the freight amount written back, I can do that. And then underneath this, actually, this freight cost from Starship, this is just a user defined field I created. I work with a lot of clients that, hey, we always want to know what we are going to be charged for this freight cost. So I created a user defined field. Most certainly work with your reseller, have them do this. And nice, nice feature with that direct interface with Starship is we can take additional information and write it back into user-defined fields in Sage. So here, um, I'm always gonna know what my freight cost is. And then before I update this, I can even you know, say, oh, no, this customer received a discount. Let me override the freight amount and charge them the correct amount. Okay. And real quick, I'll jump into those two additional features and hopefully save some time for questions here. Uh, so here's this e email, email viewer for eNotify. Um, again, this is where we can create unlimited templates. You guys can design your own emails that you want sent to your customers. Um, on these templates, you can do, instead of printing rules like the other documents, you can do emailing rules. So again, maybe customer ABC needs the uh, email to look a certain way. Um, I can create a template for them and then use that template only when the shipment is for customer ABC, but real quick, company logo, item to box, hyperlink tracking numbers. These will help reduce those inbound calls, you know, let the customer track instead of calling you. And we can do promo codes, hyperlink those. Again, unlimited templates, you decide who you want these to be sent to. And you can also decide when they are sent, either as soon as I click ship and process, I can delay them by a certain number of hours and or minutes. Or I can even just set a time hey, at six o'clock, shoot out all my emails. Okay. And then uh, last thing here is dashboard. So e-notify dashboard in that rate quote from sales order entry. Nice thing with these three additional features that Starship gives you. Um, no additional fees, no additional user license needed. With Starship, our licenses are current, current just like Sage. So you really just need a seat or license for whoever's going to be inside Starship shipping at the same time. Okay. And again, here's dashboard. I have some performance indicators, quick access. You know, I can see shipment by users. Each of your shippers can have their own login, own security roles, features, but quick access. And then we have a bunch of canned reports um, all the way from, you know, just our daily history, late delivery. Now it's going to show you any shipment that wasn't delivered on time. So you can contact the carrier, try to get a refund. And another uh, one of these reports that customers run all the time is this applied versus contract. This report simply is going to go out, show you all your shipments. It's going to give you the applied. So what you charge the customer for the shipment, compare it to your contract rate. And then the third column, of course, would be the plus or minus. So um, really, uh, it's going to show you, you know, make sure you guys aren't losing money. Uh, definitely show you the ones that, you know, if you did, shows you what you lost money on. Okay, uh, so that's really want to show you kind of a, in a 30,000 foot quick overview of Starship. Uh, put up my contact information. You know, please feel free to reach out to me. If you have any other questions, kind of do want to do a one-on-one -on -one demo. Um, you know, I can show you some more features. I can show you an LTL shipment. I can show you how we can automate 
that um, third party um, shipment as well um, and get into even can get into handling blind shipments or drop shipments right so I don't know if there's any other questions thank you Matt this is yeah, Caroline awesome. I see a few questions coming in so okay. um, please feel free everybody on the line to um, type your questions into the questions pane on the control panel um, in the meantime, I have um, a couple here. Um, the first one is I'm shipping with a Dewey pile, and um, do I import my tariffs into Starship in order to get the rate? And how does uh, that so, work? So the tariff codes yeah, can be set up um, inside uh, with Starship, um, freight class, and all the tariff codes. Again, kind of its own separate database with that line item detail. Um, and so they'd be right right there inside Starship. Okay. And then I think that they might be referring to, Matt, with the rating, um, you know, rating with a Dewey um, oh. and getting their rates into Starship. So can you just um, review that too, please? Yeah. So, uh, again, when I did that rating um, right from inside Starship where I had that parcel shipment where it just showed UPS and FedEx, I would actually, if I used the A Dewey, I had their module, I would actually be able to see um, the A Dewey. It would list A Dewey and it would show me my actual contract rate that I have with A Dewey. Um, with LTL carriers, the list rate would show zero uh, because they do not publish list rate. So it would be your actual contract rate. And again, that can either be from Starship or from sales order entry. Great, thanks. Um, Next one, do I have to purchase a specific label stock in order to print the packing list? And I think they might be speaking to that um, packing list plus shipping label that you might have shown, Matt. So maybe we can give them oh. the options there. Yeah, so there is, uh, with that smart label that I showed, um, there is a actual template that you can buy and it is a, um, goes to a laser printer and up to you the usually what a lot of clients will do is the left side is the actual shipping label so that's just going to be able to peel off and then stick that on the outside of the box and then what that template form does is then it actually folds in half so it, it covers up the packing list and then you peel it and then stick that on the outside of the box and then when the customer receives their package, they can actually, it's, it's perforated, so they just tear it, and then their packing list is um, right on the inside of that. And um, I think on those, those forms, you can actually even have them designed so your company logo is on the outside. Uh, so again, you'd have a shipping label and then a covered up packing list that the customer just tears off to get. Um, oh, yeah, those are that, cool. Yeah. <laughs> what what can you just go over the other options too cuz um you know that the packing list as far as how you can how those can be printed. Yeah, and the other option which a lot of clients nowadays are find are using is they send the packing list actually just back to a thermal printer. So first label is going to be our shipping label where we can take that tear it off, peel it and stick it on the outside of the box. The second label is going to be the actual packing list that they just tear off, they, they don't peel it, and then they just toss it inside the box. Um, so a lot of clients are going that route. I know even um, packages I get from like Amazon, it's just a little thermal label, it's tossed inside the box, and it's my packing list. And then of course the third option is we can send that shipping label to a, a thermal printer or even a laser printer, and also follow the, um, followed up with the actual packing list to a, a piece of paper to a, a laser printer. Okay, great, thanks. Um, another question here, I'm currently using ScanCo um, for my warehouse management, and how does Starship fit into this workflow? Oh, great question. So with ScanCo, I kind of mentioned this earlier, um, however you define the shipment inside of the handheld device, so if I had two items, um, one in box one, one in box two, that's how Starship is going to bring in that, that package. So it is however it's defined on the handheld scanner. Uh, with ScanCo, we do have an enhancement. And um, let me just I'll bring up my demo system here again, quickly show you. 
go back into Starship. So with ScanCo, and I'm not sure if everyone's familiar how that works, basically from that handheld, what they do is create the entry inside of shipping data entry in, in Sage. Uh, so this document type would need to be set at invoice, um, but we do have an enhancement that will still allow you to scan the sales order number or um, manually type it in, but because you're using ScanCo, it's probably already barcoded. So again, just use that regular wedge type scanner. I could scan in the sales order and then what Starship's gonna automatically do is find that related invoice. Uh, again, because that shipping data entry has been made, uh, Sage automatically creates an invoice. And if I try to pull this by a sales order number in the source document as sales order, it's gonna tell me, hey, that order is currently being shipped because technically it is inside a Sage. So again, with ScanCo, I can change this to invoice and then I can simply scan the sales order number, Starship's automatically gonna relate it to that invoice number and then bring in the, the shipment however I defined it on that handheld scanner. Awesome, thank you. Um, one last question here. I know that we have a few others, uh, but we're running um, kind of um, late on the webinar here, so we wanna be mindful of your time. Um, <clears throat> for those that we don't get to, we'll definitely follow up with you. Um, but one other question that we had, Matt, was regarding, um, it was a question on the rate quote. When you did the rate quote on the shipping screen, um, mm -hmm. they were curious about doing um, a rate quote um, when they're um, taking orders um, oh. through sales order entry. Yes, yeah, so again, included with Starship, no additional fees, no additional seats or licenses needed. Um, inside sales order entry, if my system wants to cooperate here, um, quickly I'll just bring up one order here. As you can see, we add this rate quote button. And, um, so I can simply just click on this as a customer service rep, I put in my order and I can click the rate quote button and then what that's going to do is bring me to a rating screen, kind of just like what we saw inside of Starship, where I can see all the different carriers that I have modules with. Again, UPS, FedEx, USPS, uh, LTL, so A. Dewey, you know, SIA, so on and so forth. Um, from there, I can also, if I want to actually do the address of validation ahead of time, I can also do that. And I apologize, I should have had this up and ready, but let me log back in here. Um, also from this screen, um, if inside of Starship I have packaging scenarios set up, the customer service rep can actually see those. Um, so I know usually at time of order, they might not have any idea of how the shipment's gonna be packaged, but if I do have packaging scenarios set up inside of Starship, they would actually see those. So I could say, oh yeah, you know, this one is always gonna go in this large box. This other item is gonna go into say a medium box. And from there, it's also gonna pull in the dimensions that way, when they rate shop, you know, it's going to get them a really good ballpark rate. Okay. And then actually, here's the, the screen. And of course, I, I grabbed an LTL shipment, but um, as you can see, the carrier type, all that information is going to be, it's going to populate from that ship via. And then um, here's all the ship to information. So again, I can do the address validation. And that, again, here I just have my item, the item on this, this shipment. There's a packaging scenario, so they know oh, it's going in a large box on this pallet. They can manually build if you know if they they do know how. I do have some clients that they actually have a, a chart up by their machine where they know how to everything's going to ship. So they actually build the um, shipment right from their machine and right inside this uh, rate quote screen. And then from here, two options: they can rate or rate shop. Uh, difference between that rating is just going to show me the options for the carrier serve or the carrier selected above rate shop is the one that you're probably going to want to click on because this is actually going to go out again and show me for all the options for all the carriers that I have modules with um, again, my machine is having a fit here so here you go so again this was an LTL carrier so I have a couple LTL carriers set up and I can see I can see again LTL's list is zero contract applied. Wow, I'm giving some good discounts, but applied is plus or minus any freight rules. So if you guys have freight rules set up, which it looks like I do, and I'm losing money here, but um, they can actually also see if there are freight rules. So hey, maybe free shipping over X amount of dollars. Um, and then for security reasons, I do have clients, hey, we don't want our customer service rep to see contract rates. So these columns you can hide um, if you only want them to see lists or the applied, uh, you most certainly can do that. 
And then uh, any changes made in this screen, so maybe address validation comes back, this should be West, or I decide to go with a different carrier service. Once I click Apply, it will automatically update the sales order for them as well. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. We have a couple yeah. more, but we're just going to take the rest of the questions offline for now since we're already over on our time. We appreciate everybody coming out. Um, and Matt, if you want to put up your um, contact oh, yeah. information, yeah, we'll agree. put that up and then we'll definitely follow back up with all of you. Um, and we appreciate you taking a look at Starship today. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yep. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. And please feel free to reach out to me, and uh, I'll I'll uh, take a look at all those questions and make sure to get answers out to you, every one of you. So.